Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Clostridium difficile. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash cdiff or in the infectious diseases section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge and help you remember the information longer at members.zerodefinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Clostridium difficile, often called C. diff, is a gram-positive, rod-shaped, anaerobic bacteria. Infection is associated with the repeated use of antibiotics, as well as proton pump inhibitors, such as omeprazole, and healthcare settings. C. difficile produces spores which are released in the feces, and these spores can survive on contaminated surfaces and hands, helping to spread the bacteria to others. It can colonize the intestines without causing any symptoms or any issues. And then when antibiotics interrupt the normal intestinal microbiome, C. difficile can proliferate and get out of control. It produces toxins, particularly toxin A, which is enterotoxin, and toxin B, which is cytotoxin, and these toxins cause symptoms and complications. Let's talk about the antibiotics associated with C. diff. The antibiotics most associated with C. difficile start with the letter C, and they include clindamycin, ciprofloxacin, and other fluoroquinolones, cephalosporins, and carbapenems, such as meropenem. Next, let's talk about the presentation. Colonization, where the bacteria live harmlessly in the intestines, is usually asymptomatic. Infection presents with diarrhea, nausea, and abdominal pain. Severe infection with colitis can present with dehydration and systemic symptoms such as fever, tachycardia, and hypotension. Next, let's talk about the diagnosis. Diagnosis is based on stool samples. A stool sample can be tested for the C. difficile antigen, specifically glutamate dehydrogenase, and the A and B toxins by PCR or enzyme immunoassay. The antigen test shows whether C. difficile is present, but not whether it's producing toxins. The antigen is the initial screening test and is followed up with tests for the toxins if C. difficile is identified. Next, let's talk about management. Management involves supportive care and oral antibiotics. The options for oral antibiotics are oral vancomycin, which is first line, or oral fidaxomycin, which is second line. Patients need to be isolated until 48 hours after the last episode of diarrhea. It's worth mentioning there's a high recurrence rate, so after treatment, the infection can reoccur. Fecal microbiota transplantation, or fecal transplant, is an option for recurrent cases of C. diff. The stool microbiome, meaning the bacteria in the stool of a healthy donor, is transferred to the patient via capsules, colonoscopy, or an enema. Finally, let's talk about complications. Pseudomembranous colitis is characterized by inflammation in the large intestine, with yellow-white plaques that form pseudomembranes on the inner surface of the bowel wall. This is seen during a colonoscopy and confirmed with biopsies to examine the histology. Toxic megacolon is a complication of severe inflammation in the large intestine and involves dilation of the colon. Patients with toxic megacolon are very unwell and they have a high risk of bowel rupture. Treatment involves supportive care and surgical resection of the affected portion of the bowel. 
Additional complications of C. difficile include bowel perforation and sepsis. Research has consistently shown that testing yourself after learning a topic has a powerful effect on how long you retain that information. This is known as the testing effect. Studying and then testing yourself results in longer lasting and stronger recall on that information when tested at a later date, even when compared with additional study sessions. If you're preparing for a medical exam and you're not regularly testing your knowledge and practicing your recall, you're failing to maximize your potential. The Zero to Finals member site contains flashcards, short answer questions, multiple choice questions, and extended matching questions that are purpose built to supplement the Zero to Finals content, helping you build your internal database of knowledge and take advantage of the powerful testing effect. If you like the Zero to Finals notes, books, videos, and podcasts, then you'll love the member's site.